Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent of goal, joining you on a very, very grey, wet and miserable Sunday in the UK, but it's a Sunday after Arsenal picked up three valuable points in the Premier League and the hunt for the top four with that 2-1 win against Brentford yesterday. I did do my player ratings video after the game, uh, but I thought I'd pop on today, talk a little bit more in depth about some of the key moments in that one, what Mikel had to say after the game and look a little bit ahead to that top four battle which is certainly heating up first of all i just want to start this video by saying a big big happy birthday to chris guy one of my best mates who i've known since i was i don't know why i'm saying this big because you can't see how low down to the ground i'm pointing but basically been around him for almost all my all my life and uh is one of my very best friends from traveling to wrestlemania to being next to me at my wedding um golf courses all around the world nightclubs everywhere just top top guy happy 40th can't wait till next weekend when we all go out and uh, celebrate in style so have a good day mate and also uh big hello to joseph Searle, who went to the game yesterday with my dad sat in my seat because obviously i'm in the press box so my seat is spare um my dad takes different people with him each game and he took joseph with him yesterday it was his first time with my dad at the game and uh yeah so i hope you enjoyed that three points to mark the occasion right good win yesterday Look, i thought arsenal played very very well first half was frustrating nil nil at half time you started to think oh no not here we go again but Burnley all over again. The, the difference this time was that Arsenal played miles better than they did against Burnley. But against Burnley, they really, really struggled running out of ideas. Against Brentford, even when it got to half-time, you still felt they're eventually going to find a way through. They're going to score. I mean, 16 shots in that first half. Um, I think it was the most since 2017 that they'd had in 45 minutes of football. Um, utterly dominant, utterly dominant. And you just felt it was only going to be a matter of time. There was tension. There was nerves. Of course, there is. The longer it goes especially with what happened against Burnley, still fresh in everyone's mind. Um, but Smith Rowe's goal straight after half-time, it kind of just settled everything down. The Saka obviously got the second. Shame they conceded that one right at the end. Definitely a shame for those of you like me who had uh, an Arsenal defender in your FPL team and uh, robbed of points right at the death. Um, so that did take the gloss off it a little bit because I think, you know, Brentford offered absolutely nothing in the game and Arsenal very much deserved a clean sheet, but one set piece right at the end. Done for them and yeah, it was a good job that Saka did get the second goal and kill things off. I think, again, you kind of look at how that game went and think, you know, it should have been a far more comfortable win for Arsenal. You know, they need to score more goals. They need to take advantage of this dominance and score more goals. You know, they got the two yesterday, should have comfortably had three or four. Um, and, you know, if you get three or four, then it's absolutely done and dusted. You don't have to worry about anything. So I think that's something Arsenal are going to have to improve on between now and the end of the season. Whether they can is another thing, because do they have enough goals in the squad? That's going to be a big, big factor between now and the end of the season. I'll touch on that a little bit at the end of the video. Um, uh, it's what Mikel had to say. I think we played really well, created so many chances and shots and attempts on goal in the first half, but we didn't score in the Premier League. You have to put those chances away. But we came back in the second half again. We're really convincing, scored the goal, and then it was a matter of getting the second to kill the game. Once we'd done that, it was a shame we conceded, but overall, we should be happy with the result and the performance. And absolutely, look, 15 games to go now. Um, Performance-wise, you want to see good performances, no doubt about it. But the position Arsenal are in, how tight it's going to be for this top four battle, you just got to get the win any which way at the moment. Um, it feels a little bit too early to be saying it's just all about the result because obviously you want to see good performances. But for, for me, I tell you what, if they scramble 15 1-0 wins between now and the end of the season, I'll be more than happy. I'll put it that way. Um, but I do think it was a good performance yesterday. I thought Arsenal played some really nice stuff. The goals were fantastic. Brilliant from Smith Rowe. Brilliant from Saka. Um, and they played some really nice stuff, moved the ball around quickly. Brentford looked very much like a championship team, to be fair. But um, it was, a, it was a, a solid performance. And I think, um, yeah, everyone sort of left that ground feeling pretty happy about what they had seen. I wanted to talk a little bit about Martin Odegaard, who continues to impress. I mean, what an absolute bargain. £30 million. It looked at the time. We saw what he did in that second half of last season when he was here on loan. And... For £30 million, it just looked like a bargain. Everyone was banging on about James Madison and things like that in the summer. Um, it would cost so much money. You know, you're talking 60 odd million pounds to get Martin Odegaard for £30 million, half the price of James Madison, um, who was being touted around. I'm not saying Madison's a bad player and I wouldn't have wanted him at Arsenal because I think he's good and I think he'd have been good at Arsenal. But, you know, that's a hell of a deal that, that Arsenal managed to get. A young international, still only 23, nowhere near his prime yet, only going to get better. Bags load of potential and talent. Um, 
an international captain to get him for thirty million pounds. It always looked like a bargain, and it is absolutely proving it now. He's just getting better and better and better. He's really settling in. He was a little bit quiet when he first arrived. I think we all expected him to just hit the ground running because he'd already been here, but it did take him a little bit of time. But he is just getting better and better now as the season progressed. And I thought he was absolutely sensational yesterday. I gave Smith Rowe my man of the match just because Smith Rowe got that goal. And it almost felt like at that point of the game, he'd seen everyone struggle to score themselves. And he just thought, you know what, I'm going to do it myself. He just got the ball, legged it, beat a couple of men and scored. And it was just such a massive moment that I gave him man of the match because I thought he played very, very well. But Odegaard was just sensational. I loved watching him. The movements, some of the passes, that little through ball he played to I think it was Saka in the first half which allowed Saka to get in down the right and the cutback was eventually cleared but the pass from Odegaard it was just absolutely sensational it was, it was Ozil at his best you know just to spot it find the gap perfect weight and um, I'm just loving watching Martin Odegaard play at the moment and I said it at the time when Arsenal signed him I thought it was a fabulous deal and it was all it was no wonder that he was Arsenal's priority last summer when it came to signing the playmaker they were looking at and um, and yeah, yeah, I just thought it was a fantastic performance. I, I love watching. He's one of those players that you just, I just love watching. It's just like your he glides across the pitch. Everything goes through him. And it, absolutely everything went through him yesterday with Arsenal. I was looking at the stats. I mean, he had the most passes, 73 of anyone. Um, most successful passes, 65. Most passes in the opposition half, 58. Um, uh, touches the ball, 86. Only Suarez and Tierney in defence had more than that. And, you know, they're receiving the ball from the goalkeeper. Um, but also in defence, you look at his defence stat, he gained possession seven times. No one else gained possession that much uh, as him in an Arsenal shirt yesterday. And that just kind of sums him up as well, because he is this wonderfully talented playmaker who loves to get on the ball and get forward and bring others into the game. But he also, he really does, you know, he's in and around, he presses really well, he gets the ball back, he works hard. You know, he's an absolute manager's dream. And um, I thought he was great yesterday. The one thing with Odegaard is he, he needs to be more ruthless in front of goal he's got to work on that killer instinct he could have had a couple of goals yesterday um and that's something he does need to work on because he's got all the talent you know he, he should be getting 10 goals a season uh, i would say and you know yesterday that one in the first half when he went through should have shot i don't know why he didn't and yet he decided to pass the ball on to saka who was in a worse position and um it was on saka's right foot it just wasn't a decent pass and it was like yeah you've got to take responsibility in that position martin have a go yourself and then in the second half we went through one on one it was a good save by david rea but odegaard's got to be scoring that so that's the one the one thing i would say at the moment with martin is that that's what he needs to work on and i'm sure you know he knows that there's no doubt about that um but in terms of his all-round game and just how good he is when he gets on the ball and how important he is to this Arsenal team, he's just you know he's just getting better and better and better. I just I love watching them. That the link up he has with Saka as well is something very very special. They're on a really good, they've got a really good understanding between them those two, and you know they're so young they're just gonna get they're just gonna get better and better. And uh, yeah, fabulous piece of transfer business for Arsenal that in the uh, summer. I'm not quite sure what Real Madrid were thinking really. Um, to let him go for that amount, of, that that amount of money, it was a it was a brilliant deal for Arsenal, absolute bargain. I said it at the time, and now what are we eight months on, whatever it is, and it's looking a, even more of a bargain um, than it did at the original deal. And you know, will he end up being Arsenal's future captain? Who knows? Because he's an international captain. He's done it for Norway. You know, he takes on an awful lot of responsibility. Mikel Arteta clearly likes him, um, and it'll be interesting. It'll be it'll be there or thereabouts. Like personally, I, I, I'm not sure he's ready for it yet in terms of the captaincy i'm not sure he's that real sort of forceful voice in the dressing room but he certainly leads by example on the pitch and he'll be he'll be there or thereabouts when it comes to the pack captain's pick but i think probably a kieran tierney or a gabriel as i've said before are just ahead of him in the pecking order when it comes uh, to the captaincy but well done martin loved that performance yesterday really enjoyed it Saka and Smith Rowe, I mean, there's not much more to say about those two, is it? Ten goals for Emil Smith Rowe now in all competitions this season. Seven for Bukai Saka, 17 between them. Just getting better and better and better. Um, you know, Smith Rowe, I think it's, he's the first T, is it? Well, I've got the stat here, I read it now. First academy graduate since Cesc Fabregas to score 10 or more goals in a campaign. He's, he was speaking about that Arsenal. He said that's really special to hear. It means a lot. It's always been a dream to play for Arsenal, so to hear it, it means a lot. Um, and as I said, you know that first goal that went in yesterday was so important after the frustration of the first half, and it almost it just felt 
like he was like, I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to take responsibility. And when you've got a kid that young, 21, feels like he can do that, is a fantastic thing. And then Bukaya Saka's goal as well, brilliant finish, thumped it in. You know, I think seven for the season for Bukaya and probably the weakest part of his game with his finishing, but he's getting better and better with that as well. Um, uh, and that was really great to see. I mean, Mikel was waxing lyrical about them afterwards. The, the chant was ringing around the stadium. You know, for those two, it's, they are just absolutely living the dream, aren't they? Two Haaland boys coming through from the academy together, now absolutely starring in the first team. And fair play to Emil, because he's had to bide his time recently, hasn't he? With Martinelli, he's been in, in such good form. Emil's had to sit on the bench for a little bit because he was injured and he couldn't really get back into the team because Gabriel Martinelli was playing so well. He's bided his time, got his opportunity from the start yesterday and you know, absolutely taken it. And what that does is give Mikel Arteta a really difficult decision to make against Wolves on Thursday night. Who comes in? Who doesn't? Who, who's left on the bench? You would think it'll be Smith Rowe keeping his place because that's kind of how it's worked so far in the pecking order. If you come in, if you impress, you state your claim, then you get your chance. And you know, Smith Rowe took that on Saturday, so I'd be very surprised if Martinelli comes in and comes straight back into the side um, on Thursday night. But we shall wait and see. Um, one little thing, the, the Granite Xhaka armband incident, that was interesting yesterday. I'm sure you saw it, a lot of people picked up on it. Um, when Lacazette came off for Nketiah about 10 minutes ago, obviously Lacazette's captain, he took the armband off. He was he was sort of trying to give it to Granite, and Granite was like, no, 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 no. Because And um, in the end, as he went off Lacquer, he gave it to Nketiah. <laughs> Nketiah tried to give it to Granite, and Granite was like, no, no, no. And in the end, Nketiah just end up whacking it on. Fair play to him, I would if I was him, and I got given the Arsenal captain's arm, man. Um, and the whole issue of that, it's quite, it looked weird, I admit. I did look, it did look strange, but the thing was that Tierney was supposed to have it, and Tierney was down the other end of the pitch because he was taking a throw-in that was sort of deep in the Arsenal half, which is why the substitution was being made. And um, because Tierney was all the way down there, they were kind of like, well, you just want to... Um, Lacquer was just kind of giving it away to Granite. Granite was like, no, no, it should be Tierney. And it all looked a little bit messy. Mikel Arteta explained it afterwards. Um, I thought what was interesting of it, though, was that Jack was on the pitch, yet Tierney was next in line to have the armband. And that certainly says a lot in terms of the pecking order for, for the captaincy, I thought, for when uh, Lacazette goes. I mean, look, we know that Xhaka can't be captain, even if he stays, which isn't a foregone conclusion next season. Um, if he stays at a club, yes, he ticks a lot of the boxes for captaincy, international captain, blah, blah, blah. But there's no way he can be Arsenal captain because of what happened last time. It's just not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was quite interesting that, that Tierney was uh, definitely ahead of him in the pecking order when it came to that Okay, just before I go, just wanted to look look a little bit at the top four. It, it's a weird one, wasn't it? He sort of left the stadium quite buzzing after that result yesterday and then Tottenham went and sucked the life out of him without a win at Manchester City and it was a fabulous win for Tottenham. I don't know what City do. Whenever to they play Tottenham, they just get pieces, don't they? Imagine imagine Tottenham being your bogey side. I mean, all the good things that Guardiola have done in his career should just be erased because of that if you've got Tottenham as your bogey side. Um a really good win for Tottenham you know it's kind of that it really highlighted their strengths in that and you do wonder in this battle for the top four who's going to get it is it going to be Arsenal is it going to be Tottenham is it going to be Man United you look at the strengths and weaknesses of the sides and you know what Tottenham are about they've got two genuine world-class forwards in Harry Kane and Son who are going to score goals at against anyone at any time United have got Ronaldo who can score a goal against anyone at any time Arsenal don't have that and you always felt in January the fact they didn't strengthen in the forward department you know are, if they were going to come up short this season it's going to be because of a struggle of killing teams off and getting the goals you need at the key moments in time we've seen that against Burnley we saw it again yesterday I mean they got over the line yesterday but it took a while didn't it and then you watch what Tottenham did at Man City and you just think oh is that going to be the difference ultimately because they've got genuine world-class strikers who can win a game just like that in the flash of a moment and do what Harry Kane did uh, yesterday or, you know, what get Son on the counter-attack. And then you look at Man United, um, who was it they beat the other day? Brighton, wasn't it? It was 0-0, they were struggling. Then Ronaldo gets that chance, bang, goal. Um, and you do wonder if that might end up being the difference. But who knows? There's 15 games to go and it's very much in Arsenal's hands at the moment. They, they do the business between now and the end of the season. They will be in the top four. They win their game. So... Um, it's it's going to be really tight. It's going to be really exciting. It's great that Arsenal were in this position. I have to admit, at the start of the season, I didn't think they would be. I thought it was, uh, you know, they'll be battling around for the Europa League spots. Um, I wasn't sure they'd be in and around the Champions League places. I mean, if, if Chelsea hadn't got that late winner yesterday at Palace, then Chelsea would have been very much in reach for Arsenal as well in third. So I don't think they're totally out of it at the moment because they're struggling a little bit for form. There's no doubt 
Um, you know, they're not hitting the heights that we all expected they were going to the way they started the season. So maybe you can potentially draw Chelsea back into it. I mean, the title race has been blown open now as well between Manchester City and Liverpool. Um, so it's certainly all set up for a very exciting end to the season, isn't it? And Arsenal are slap bang in the mix for their Champions League places. Fingers crossed they can keep this up. Big, big game for them on Thursday night against Wolves. If they can get that one over the line, get the win, that'll be nine points from nine in the space of a week. Um, you know, really big, big. And it'll be two wins against a team competing for the top four as well in Wolves. We mustn't forget them. You know, if they win at Arsenal on Thursday night, they're going to be right back in the race for it as well. So really big week for Arsenal coming up. We'll be speaking to Mikel Arteta. I think it's Wednesday morning. It hasn't been 100% confirmed yet, but that's what I heard at the ground yesterday that the press conference will be on Wednesday morning for that one. So keep your eyes peeled. Looks like Arsenal are in decent shape. Didn't seem to pick up any injuries yesterday. Tommy Asu back involved. Didn't need to come on because Cedric Suarez played really, really well again. So squad is looking in good shape as we head into what is the crucial part of the season now 15 games to go would you believe it thanks for watching everyone enjoy your sunday uh, i'll be back tomorrow hopefully with another video so keep your eyes peeled for that